Welcome to the Weather Insights Briefing. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. It is Tuesday morning, August 6th, as we are recording this. And Jeff, National Hurricane Center still has our disturbance, disturbance one is what they're calling this, down in the uh, Caribbean. 30% chance of development over the next seven days could enter the Gulf of Mexico by this weekend. When it gets there, we'll have to see what happens with Disturbance 1 in terms of strength. And it's still fighting some dry air. It's not in the greatest environment right now, but expected to move in into a slightly more favorable environment when it gets into the Western Caribbean. As far as Tropical Storm Debbie, the big news, Debbie still the rain expecting to get 20 inches plus from the Carolinas northward into North Carolina. And Debbie is expected to move out of Georgia today and move offshore. But if it does, uh, if anything, it might increase the storm surge a little bit, which they already have storm surge warnings out. So really a non-factor still with Debbie. The big news is the rain. Debbie is expected to keep moving very slowly to the north. So a lot of People in that I-95 corridor area, Jeff, need to be on the lookout for rain over the next several days and flooding. Yeah, it's it's the freshwater flooding and, uh, you know, well inland too. So we're talking, I mean, if you just look at this orange area here, this is 8 to 12 inches, so up to a foot of rain over a huge portion of North and South Carolina and an even greater portion of, of 12 to 16 inches. And so... Um, you know, we always talk about the freshwater flooding and the inland flooding and this extending up through the Virginias and, and kind of uh, latching onto a trough here, a front over the northeast. And so there's going to be impacts with with Debbie that is going to continue. You can see Debbie here spinning, um, sort of looking a little maybe subtropical this morning, not purely tropical anymore. You can see all the heavy thunderstorms here on the east side, some dry air wrapping in on the west. And then down here in the Caribbean is our is our wave, and you can see compared to what our wave looked like the other day, this is really um, not as organized as it was, say, over the weekend. Right. Um, interestingly enough, some of this wave axis gets over here into the extreme southern Caribbean, and you can see here there's some thunderstorms developing here. And some of the models have been hinting that the low pressure, if low pressure ever develops with this, actually forms down here in this area and closer to the coast of Central America, Nicaragua. And, and that's a potential, and, and that may be why we've sort of seen, the Hurricane Center hasn't dropped the development chances, but we've seen some of the ensembles on the various models come down a little bit with development. And it may be because it interacts more here with Central America as we get into this weekend. Um, some interesting kind of things go on down here in this part of the world when you're dealing with uh, potential low pressure development. So this is the GFS ensemble. Again, at these kind of longer ranges, it's better to look at the ensembles versus the deterministic runs. Yeah. Uh, and you can see there, there's a handful here of, of, of the ensembles that do produce a low pressure center, but this is relatively on the low end. So we're talking 20, 30% um, potentially that produce low pressure, which is about what the hurricane center has as the development potential now. And then this would move on into the either the southern Gulf of Mexico potentially, or never gets really away here away from Central America. And if if that were the case, the the development chances would would go down. And so we'll just have to kind of see what happens down here, where any surface low pressure might spin up. As you mentioned, the conditions are more favorable here in the Western Caribbean, and so an increase in showers and thunderstorms and the potential for something to form is still here, but it's on the lower end. And then if you talk, start talking about, well, if something were to develop, where may it go? So yeah. This is Saturday morning, the upper level kind of steering. And you can see there's pretty decent high pressure here from the four corners back down, nosing into Texas. This is our kind of heat and dryness that we're dealing with now. And it's, yeah. it's still here. This trough here over the, the uh, Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. And this is not overly deep and, and our system, if anything were to develop, would kind of already be past the influence of this trough. And so the steering function would likely be this mid-level ridge here over the state of Texas. And we'll just have to see uh, if something does get going down this area. So, you know, no big answers this morning on, on what may or may not happen in the Southern Gulf and Western Caribbean as we get into the weekend. Um, and we'll just have to keep an eye on it as we as uh, as we see how it interacts with the landmass there of Central America and the Yucatan. 
And of course, we'll continue to have briefings throughout the week and weekend. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our Weather Insights YouTube channel and share if you would and get the latest tropical briefings from Weather Insights. Jeff, thank you very much.